Good morning. Welcome to Viewpoint on Ukraine today. And uh, joining us on the show today is American director David Novak. He is presenting his new documentary, Finding Babel, here in Kiev at the Molodist Film Festival. It's based on the famous Soviet writer Isaac Babel from the 20s and 30s. So, David, thank you very much for uh, coming into Ukraine today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here today. Yeah. So, you have your new film. Can you tell us uh, briefly about you know, the film itself then? It's Sounds very exciting. Absolutely, thank you. I'm, I'm so excited to be premiering it here, uh, of all places. The film Finding Babel is about uh, the life and the writing of the writer Isaac Babel, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a Ukrainian-born Jewish writer, born uh, outside of Odessa, raised both outside and inside Odessa, mm -hmm. uh, who became one of the most prominent writers of the 1920s and 1930s in the Soviet Union. And most of his publishing was in the 1920s. Um, and ultimately, he suffered the fate of many writers of that period, and he was executed under Stalin mm -hmm. uh, in 1939. Yeah, and he has this amazing story. I was um, reading you know, before the interview mm -hmm. about his lifetime, his travels, that sort of thing. And um, really, it's, it's incredible. So uh, you made this uh, film. So can you tell us a bit about the filming itself and how you got into this project? Sure. Um, I had been researching my great-great-uncle, who was a famous composer mm -hmm. in Odessa, actually. And, yeah. okay. and I was looking for uh, writing about Odessa from the period, because this was pre-revolutionary Odessa. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot to find in sort of archival material. And I came across Isaac Babel. You know, as an American, I wasn't raised on, on reading Isaac Babel at all. I fell in love with his writing, and of course I read all of the Odessa stories probably the series that he's most famous for throughout the former Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody read uh, the Odessa stories. Yes. Very funny, sardonic take on the Jewish mafia of pre-revolutionary Odessa. Mm -hmm. And um, so I fell in love with his writing, and I did more research on him. And ultimately, I coincidentally met somebody who was friends with Isaac Babel's wife, his, his last wife of seven years yeah. uh, before he was executed, mm -hmm. uh, Antonina Piroshkova. And I went and interviewed her. She was still alive. She was 92 years old mm. um, and gave me a terrific interview in Washington, D.C. And this is actually in your documentary. I've seen a few clips from it. And um, her interview, she's passed away, but now, yeah. but she, no, her interview was really, really interesting. She had such an interesting life. Yeah. And that was what made you, you know, do the documentary, I guess. It was this inspiration, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that was sort of the beginning of it was to sort of get at that story, at her, her perspective on his mm. story. Uh, but I met her grandson, their grandson, when I interviewed her. And when she passed away at the age of 101... That's uh, a great age, wow. Yeah. yeah um, I spoke with her grandson, and he said that he was thinking... This is Andre, Andre mm -hmm. Malayev Babel. And he was, he was considering making a trip to Ukraine and to Russia to sort of get at the heart, at the meat of what it was that his grandfather was was writing about and what it was that he was trying to say, mm -hmm. uh, to really connect with him in a way that was deeper than he felt the scholars. And from a scholarly perspective, uh, he wanted to get deeper than that. He wanted to experience those places. Mm. And that must have been really difficult, though, because it was such a you know, convoluted, I guess you could say, history, you know, so many different details. So w when you started researching this film, how did you do it? I mean, Well, what, we, what I did initially was I read Isaac Babel's 1920 diary. He wrote mm -hmm. a diary um, while he was traveling, embedded with, with the cavalry in the war against the Poles in 1920 mm -hmm. in Western Ukraine. And it was, a, it was a very formative experience for him. He was a young man. He was only in his 20s. And he went out as a journalist, essentially, mm. uh, to document what, what was transpiring during that war. And here was this, this Jewish writer with, you know, with, with glasses and very early balding. And, and he didn't look anything like the Cossacks with whom he was, he was sleeping with every yeah. night you know, and, and, and riding on horses and traveling through the countryside with. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he, he took on a fake name. He took on a, a, a Russian-sounding name, and he sort of pretended to be somebody else, uh, but he kept this very honest diary, yeah. um, which everybody should read as a companion piece to his Red Cavalry stories, which are a very well-known set of short stories. Yeah, and, and uh, when you were filming, that you were in um, Russia, you were in Ukraine, and in the States as well. Yes, and in France And as in well. France, yes. So, so uh, when you were filming, what were the most striking moments for you as the director about this uh, story? Yeah, there were a number of them. I think that um, in Western Ukraine, in the countryside, outside of Brody, mm. um, 
there were a few things that were striking. One was how lovely everybody was. People were so friendly with with me, mm -hmm. with the crew, with Bobble's grandson. They were yeah. all excited to to meet in the village. In the yeah. village, yeah. Um, and so that was lovely, but. We, when we got to this one particular village, we were looking for a Jewish cemetery that had existed, that no longer existed. Mm -hmm. um, but a gentleman said, follow me, I want, I want to show you something. And he didn't tell us where he was taking us. Mm. And we went. We just trusted this guy. And we drove through the woods, following his, his beat-up old Lada through the woods. And, yeah. and we come across a site that turns out was a mass grave of Jews from, from World War II, mm. uh, from the Holocaust. And I didn't expect to stumble upon something like that. Because it was so hidden away, wasn't it? It, it wasn't prominent at all. It was, you, know, you had this monument that was there and yeah. just around it were trees and overgrown grasslands. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was a big surprise. And it also, it, it made me realize as a director, as, as part of the storytelling, and also I am Jewish, so I, mm. I'm familiar with this history. And my I have grandparents who were from that region. Um, I, I, I suddenly realized how the continuum of history in Ukraine, and particularly in Western Ukraine, sort of pops up. It, it just rears its head no, matter, no yeah. matter what you do, and that it needs to be looked at in a very honest and open way. And, and, and I guess that's what Babel was trying to do. And when you read his diary, mm. it becomes very clear that he was wrestling with those, those same kind of ideas. Of trying to like, keep this history going in one way or another. Yeah, or just yeah. trying to address it, trying to address the historical context of, of what had transpired and was continuing to transpire yeah. in those lands. Mm. And uh, for you as a director, this film, Finding Babel, must have been a big undertaking, I guess, you know, because you're following this legendary writer and um, at some points, did you feel like you were living his life almost? You were following his story around when you were going to Odessa, for example? And yeah, absolutely. I mean, Odessa, being in the Moldavanka in Odessa was, was wonderful. Mm. It doesn't feel like it's changed. I mean, sure, there are satellite dishes on the, on the apartment buildings. Yeah. But besides that, the buildings are the same. The balconies with people standing out on the balconies and hearing the voices in the, in the courtyards, mm. they, haven't, they haven't changed. And I found that to be very lovely. And of course, there's a street in Odessa named after Babel in the Moldavanka now, which is very nice. And, and during the course of the filming, a, a beautiful statue of Babel, a very evocative statue, was mm. installed in Odessa. Yeah. Um, he's a hero there. Yeah. Oh, and what about funding for the film itself? How, how did you get the money to make this big documentary? Uh, well, I started out with a number of private investors uh, and donors. It's mostly donations that, mm -hmm. that come in to fund this kind of documentary. Um, and then ultimately, I went to an organization in Toronto mm. uh, called the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter. Very, very interesting group. And they were a key early sponsor of the film. Mm. And what they do is they're looking at the history of, of, of Ukraine and Jews. Their, their board members are made up of a mixture of, of Ukrainians and Jews. And they're looking at history and finding a way to uh, help Ukrainians and Jews work together moving forward into the future. Mm. Um, and they've been very, very successful at it. And, and do they have another, another number of uh, projects as well? They or? have huge projects. So they're yeah. working on a project now with, um, with Bobby R., with the, commemora uh, the commemoration oh, yeah. of Bobby the R. Memorial. for actually, right, the memorial. Mm -hmm. So they're deeply involved in that. They're involved in, um, they're involved in the work with... Uh, a group out of Israel who are helping Ukrainians with humanitarian aid on the front. Mm. Um, there's a lot going on that this group is involved in. Ah, interesting. So what are your plans for the future then? Uh, after this film, do you think that you're going to do some more films, similar films? Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what is next here in Ukraine. I do find I keep coming back here. There's yeah. something about there's my something roots. something it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I started out, my, my first filming endeavor was, was in Odessa, mm. uh, doing a film about my great-great-uncle, who I had mentioned before. Yeah. Um, Right now, I am working on a film that is about Dachau concentration camp, mm -hmm. but from a very unusual perspective. It's, uh, it's similarly, I think where there's a similar thread in my work is that Babel is essentially about um, art, in yeah. this case, literature, mm -hmm. um, in the face of totalitarianism, mm -hmm. especially rising totalitarianism that, that ultimately cost him his life. Yeah. Um, in this new piece that I'm working on about Dachau, it's actually rooted in art from a Polish 
Catholic prisoner of Dachau mm -hmm. um, that has been recently discovered, uh, artwork where he depicted life in Dachau. Mm -hmm and um, told sort of through that perspective. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds very interesting. I look forward to seeing that. So, David Novak, thank you very much for coming into Vo uh, Viewpoint on uh, Ukraine Today. My uh, that was uh, David Novak here in Ukraine Today. And now back to the news.